Hello, lovely people. I'm so glad that you're joining me today and warm welcome to the Stars of Learning podcast. And I'm your host, Jyoti Ji. And you know that, right? Each fortnight, I interview the thought leaders in the industry who will share their best practices, challenges, solutions, latest trends, and their journey, which will fast track us to engage, enlighten, and empower. So friends, do you agree there are two important elements for success. One is money and second is efforts. I agree that many people would have taught you from school days, you know, to put effort so that you gain success. But not many would have taught you on how to make money. I'm sure some of you might have put in your best efforts towards making money. And I also know that not many of you know how to make your earnings flourish and fuel your dreams. So what I believe is knowledge is something we should gain with through the experts and today we will be talking about the financial know-how and intelligent planning is all it takes to transform your small savings into big funds as financial prosperity is not possible without proper financial management and we are in the month of april right financial year begins and i'm sure you would have had loads of planning for your money management. So don't stress out if you're new to the process of managing money. As I have invited the thought leader in financial management, Mrin Agarwal, financial coach, founder, director of FinSafe, and co-founder of Women Tara to discuss on the topic, financial well-being, how to make smart money decisions for your life. A little intro about Mrin. She comes with 25 years of experience in wealth management and financial education and inclusion. Her passion is to empower millions of working Indians by providing them the tools which needs to manage their personal finance and be financially independent based on their goals, growth, and safety. She has one many awards towards financial education and advisory awards, friends. So you should read her print articles in Mint, Business Standard, Economic Times, and many more newspapers. And I know Mrin from her corporate service, and she has done a wonderful programs on financial wellness program. And when I attended that, that was an eye opener for me on how to focus on money and how it has to be part of our goal plan too. Until that, I think Mrin has uh, helped more than a lakh people she has trained across India. So this will be very inquisitive, important element for your life to enable the money in your life. So wear your gears on to know how all about the financial well-being, how to make that smart money decisions for your life, friends. So join me to welcome my guest, Mrin Agarwal. Mrin, once again, a warm welcome to Stars of Learning podcast. Thank you, Jyoti. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Thank you. So, Mrin, uh, to begin, you know, as a financial coach, uh, your insight on what are the basics of money management? So, of course, uh, it starts with budgeting, uh, a word that most people don't like. It's about building financial security so that you are prepared for uncertainties. And then it's really about growing your money. So, you know, these are the three basics that you need to focus on. Unfortunately, when I see most people, it's all about saying, I just want to grow my money um, in the fastest and the quickest way. No, the whole idea is to have enough money in the long term so that mm. you can lead life on your terms. Mm. Very, very well said, Mrin. But then, Mrin, sadly, financial aspects are not taught to children while growing and even in our education system right other than the math part and we need to learn on uh, personal financial planning and how to save money the most effective way and uh, that's very important is what I feel and since you have mastered and trained you know uh, lots of people to imbibe that financial discipline I know this is, would be a huge topic by itself but give us a glimpse on you know so my listeners understand the importance on how to save money 
So I think uh, some very important aspects to keep in mind is that it is the simple, boring investments that give you an average return that actually work better over a period of time than all trending investments that go up very fast and come down equally fast, right? Mm -hmm. and, and hence, you know, what we need to look at is instruments that basically beat inflation that compound that are tax efficient in the sense that they're taxed at a rate lower than your rate of taxation may mm -hmm. or may not give a tax deduction. I mean, I'm never bothered about tax deductions because end of the day, it is the post-tax return that's very important. And also an uh, instrument that is of a medium risk. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, these are four very important aspects that you need to look at when you are evaluating uh, your investment. Um, and also uh, keep in mind that you need to have a long-term horizon. You need to be patient. You know, investor behavior is actually more important than the instrument that you choose because 80% of returns are actually driven by investor behavior. So mm -hmm. even if you choose the right instrument, but you do not remain invested for long enough, you're not going to get the best out of that instrument, right? True. So these are some very important uh, things that you have to keep in mind when you are investing. Mm -hmm. Very well uh, told on the right instruments and so many uh, topics you mentioned there you know uh, which we need to focus on which compounds you know post-tax return medium risk and the behavior also is uh, uh, what I understand so so with all these uh, points uh, uh, Mrin, I believe we need to dream big believe in it and make it happen and we can achieve it only we take that first step and it's so true even in financial aspect to start saving investing and you know have that uh, behavior patience uh, to grow your money and since I have attended a couple of your sessions and I follow you on social platform and you have given uh, uh, you know some cool practical tips on, you know, how to start saving money. Can you share that some insights to my listeners? Well, uh, we do highly recommend the 30, 30, 40 rule, which is of your income that you take home. You need to be saving 40%. Yes, I know it sounds incredibly high. 30% <laughs> uh, towards expenses and 30% towards EMI. And you know, the 30% that you have towards expenses, you need to have an amount allocated towards your fund expenses, mm. right? And the idea is to try and stick to this. It's, it, it's very similar to, you know, what you do on your physical health, where you say, okay, I'm going to take these set of steps to ensure that I have good physical health, which means maybe eating in a balanced way or doing some amount of exercise. It's the same thing with your money as well. Other True. than that, I also recommend that spend some time reading. Uh, mm -hmm. Money is one subject where we are very risk averse. We do not want to take any risk. But at the same time, I find most investors tend to invest based on tips or information from others rather than their own research. So I think mm -hmm. it's really important to also read up, take a course or Take a subscription of one of the financial dailies and keep yourself aware of personal finance matters. Um, and I think that's a good way to really start. Of course, you will need to invest your money, get your hands dirty, lose mm. some money, and then only you will gain the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. And, and, and uh, we need to believe that, you know, money is also plays a vital role in our life and it's everything it's a power it's for better future you know it's a security you get that freedom with money so so what would be your recommendation uh, um, Rin, on investment options because you did say about you know the medium risks and uh, be investment investors behavior is also very important so in that context because when I talk to men they say stocks mutual fund and when you talk to women they talk about e-gold or insurance or a, you know no risk options so what would be your views as a financial coach 
Well, uh, you need to be well diversified among different asset classes. So that means have exposure to equities, bonds, gold, real estate, mm -hmm. all the asset classes that are there, but mm -hmm. have a good uh, exposure to equities. I believe having at least 30 to 40% exposure to equities in your portfolio is important. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the only way that you can really get your money to grow. And uh, I also believe that investing in equities through mutual funds is probably the best way to invest because one, you don't have to do the research to figure out where to invest. You have somebody doing that for you. It's mm -hmm. also very tax efficient uh, and it's very easy to invest into as well. There are lots of platforms through which you can invest. So I do believe that equities through mutual funds should be a significant holding of course, then you have the debt side of your portfolio, which could be fixed deposits and debt funds, and then maybe like a 15% in gold. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, real estate for consumption. Um, I've, there's no harm in a second real estate as well, but you know you need to be aware that the returns are not what they used to be. They're pretty low. Like you know, second real estate would yield you anywhere less than 10%. So as long as you're okay with that, that should be fine also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, so, uh, uh, Marin, uh, what about income tax filing? I know this topic can go in length on a high level. What is that uh, you would caution people to take care of as FinSafe India has impacted more than 72K people uh, on financial lives for the year 21-22, right? So majority of people file returns themselves. They do it on their self. And many tax filers right they do not understand all the line items which comes on the you know uh, while they are doing the filing and and i feel it's important that income tax is filed correctly uh, so that you know uh, you get your you know post tax returns as you mentioned which is also important for uh, people uh, the employees or the business uh, people so I think uh, tax filing is an area where people tend to be penny wise miser and pound wise foolish because um, there are while there are a lot of DIY sites out there, certainly if you fall in the ITR2 category and today you can be in ITR2 because you might be holding foreign stocks or you might be having RSUs um, or of course capital gains because you've been dealing in stocks and mutual funds in India, right? Mm. Um, so if you are filing ITR2, please do it through a chartered accountant. Most people find it very difficult to figure out uh, the entries. You know, the entries also have to be put down at a security level, especially if you're having foreign holdings, it's very, very complicated. And okay. the bigger issue is that if you get a tax notice tomorrow and you need to refile, there are huge penalties for refiling. Mm. So you might as well get it right the first time when you're filing it. And mm. for that, I would highly recommend that please use the services of a chartered accountant who can help you file things correctly. Yeah, yeah. Makes uh, sense. Uh, uh... Yeah, have a right coach, you know, uh, uh, it's become a trend that you have a health coach, uh, you know, and a goal for your financial well-being. Also, it's better to have a coach and file through a CA. And uh, uh, while we are looking at uh, elements like income tax and the right instruments for savings and uh, the, you know, 30, 30, 40 rule is also we are aware now. So preparing for emergencies, what would be your guide uh, for financial stability, Imran? Um, so you need to have six months of your expenses kept aside. The best place to do it is in a simple fixed deposit and keep partly in the savings account because these are the most accessible options at the time of need. So mm. six months of expenses kept in your bank account and fixed deposit together would be a good option. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I recall, uh, you know, my elders saying that, you know, do not uh, say what is uh, left after spending, you know, in a ransom way, but spend what is left after saving, right? So, so in that connection, Mren, uh, few things uh, which are under focused from a people. In, in fact, when I was curating these questions, I was talking to many uh, people to understand what would 
they look from the money angle so uh, some things are like you know the will part the nominations the financial documentation or the utility bills insurance related uh, not all are having that clarity so what is critical uh, for an employee and how how should they take care of this segment so as a part of planning for financial security, you certainly need to have a good amount of life insurance cover. Uh, India is one of the countries where people are very underinsured both on life and medical insurance. Mm -hmm. And it's important to focus on both of these aspects. Um, other than that, it's very important to keep financial documentation and more than that, keep your family or your spouse stroke partner aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, last year, when uh, the second wave of COVID happened, we had so many cases uh, where uh, the partner was not aware of family finances and had to undergo a lot of trauma to figure out also where the uh, partner had the bank account or where they had the DMAD account, right? So it's important to keep financial documents in order. It is equally important to keep the spouse or the partner aware of it as well. And of course, I think, uh, you know, as you grow older, certainly wills become important. Of course, at all ages, it's important to have nominations in place because it makes the transmission process much easier. So True. do spend one weekend looking at your financial documents and seeing how you can put them in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, and uh, um, Rin, uh, the art is not in making money, but in keeping it right. So, uh, and there are different stages in life for people to, to you know, uh, look at money. Uh, uh, that could be for their education, marriage, or, you know, uh, constructing the house or for a retirement. I know your 30, 30, 40 uh, rule, what you have highlighted, uh, even retirement also plays a role. So what are your tips on these kind of uh, financial planning? Um, so you see, what you need to do is work with a fee-only financial planner who can draw up a financial plan based on your financial goals. And that's the right way to go about things. Most mm -hmm. people, in fact, invest in a very ad hoc manner towards these particular goals. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you really need to do it is do it in a very structured way. And uh, certainly you also need to choose the right instrument. So, you know, for example, mm -hmm. I see a lot of times for retirement, which could be 20 years away, if people are investing into five-year tax saving fixed deposits. Whereas what they need to be looking at is probably an instrument like the national pension scheme, right? Mm. So, um, you know, uh, it's a, again, a very wide subject and the better way to just go about this would be to engage with a planner mm. um, and choose the better options. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Mrin, um, you did mention about, you know, the second wave of COVID and it, that was something like a shock of which many people would have faced that kind of a trauma. So throw some light uh, in for the people who have to navigate these financial matters after a death of loved ones, or that could be, you know, parents or a spouse or family. So what would be your guidance? See, uh, what happens is uh, one, if there is a will and two, if there is no will, so what typically happens is that you'll have to approach each of the financial institutions with all the relevant documents. The relevant documents would typically be the death certificate and uh, the KYC documents. Now, in case if there is a nominee, the financial institution deals with the nominee um, and transfers the money to the nominees. And it is the nominee's duty to then transfer it out to the legal heirs. The legal mm. heirs can also approach the financial institutions directly. But the whole point is that, you know, for all of this, mm. you need to be aware of where the documents are. More importantly, in today's digital age, you need to be aware of the login ID and the passwords. Mm. Um, and, you, you know, you need to have a hold on things basically before the death of the person, right? Mm. Because this financial discovery after the death of the person is a very painful, long process. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons why we have so much of money lying unclaimed in various accounts, whether it is insurance, EPFO, or um, uh, even mutual funds have a lot of unclaimed monies. The mm -hmm. reason being because the family members are not aware of these particular investments. Mm 
no. right so make yourself aware also many times if there is no will uh, in certain states they may they may be the need of a probate or you might have to have a letter of succession uh, mm -hmm. or a succession certificate i'm sorry um mm -hmm. so or a legal heir certificate done and all of these things are again very very time consuming so mm -hmm. um you know i would say that always be prepared with the documentation because of this reason yeah yeah very true and uh, i hear you loud you know your financial document and financial identity where, whether you are a nominee or are you a legal heir is something very important to be aware to you know progress and get that clarity on your financial aspect so so uh, my uh, next and the last question is on the uh, women uh, segment mrin um, when it comes to women right and uh, this women's day theme is also break the bias and you will agree with me that you know the money biases are responsible for women not managing it well and not i also noticed that you know not, not many of them are comfortable with money matters as it is mostly dealt by men in fact i was also one time like that but then what would be your insight on financial planning and you know talking about money uh, as you are also a co-founder co of women tara right I, and i've seen you urging financial independence for women uh, is uh, important it, it's just not a important it is a necessary how, how do we deal that yes so the first thing is that women need to start thinking that this is as important as my physical and mental well being mm -hmm. right and it's only when you start thinking that that you'll start taking care of it so remember for your physical and mental well being you're not letting anybody else take care of it right you're doing whatever needs to be done yourself it's mm -hmm. the same thing for your financial well being mm -hmm. you have to believe that this is very important and i need to take care of it myself and have that confidence and do not have this fear of losing money so one of the reasons that women do not want to manage money is because they're judged a lot if mm. they lose money like losing money is going to be part and parcel of uh, managing money right yeah. and you just have to say that okay so what if i lost some money i'll just move on and you know hopefully next time i will not lose money right true uh, so it really comes about having that confidence and that belief that you can do it and let me tell you women are actually better money managers than men because they tend to research more and once mm. they invest they remain invested so mm. these are two very good investor qualities that women have which actually men do not have <laughs> and yeah. uh, you know it's just a question of saying that i can do it and and go ahead with it mm. wonderful one uh, mrin mrin is there anything else you want to add to my listeners as a financial coach i think what i want to say is that the times are changing a lot um, we were used to times when uh, interest rates were very stable and uh, things like that i think we need to move our management of finances with the times and we need to be ready to make the change as and when required but again i would like to come back to saying that there are two very important things in managing money one mm. is about having a financial plan in place mm. and two is about choosing investments right and remaining invested mm. yeah interesting uh, one mrin so ladies and gentlemen all the links and resources which we have discussed in this episode will be made available in my show notes page of my podcast stars of learning and also on my website prajvitaknowledge.com that is p r a j v i t a knowledge.com uh, do check the description box for more details thank you so much mrin for being on this show and i really enjoyed all the insights and tips you have shared on financial well being and how to make that smart money decisions for life and loads of learning from our conversation is and it's starting from uh, basics of money management how to save invest and grow money the investment options the 30 30 40 rules 
uh, IT filings, look at for your CAs and how to handle emergency, get into a financial identity and uh, how to manage money during different stages of life, uh, retirement or education or a marriage and uh, financial matters to deal after death, very critical one and financial independence for women, you know, uh, believing that I can do it, uh, you know, to get onto the road of the financial freedom. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing all these nuggets to on my show. Thank you so much, Jyoti, for having me on the podcast. It was really nice to be able to share all of these insights. And I do hope that this will be a good starting point for a lot of your listeners to start managing their money. Sure. Thank you, Mrin. Uh, I'm sure your perception is enlightened on money management from Mrin and Agri team that you will broaden your vision on your financial well-being to make the smart money decisions. And uh, Mrin, I'm grateful for you for sharing this incredible insights and thanks you once again for taking time out and it's been great having you on my show. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Mrin. If you have got any learning or motivated hearing to her, then please do tag Mrin and myself and do share this podcast with your friends and post it on social media and on what you have learned as this will help many others to engage enlighten and empower by the way i'm always grateful to all my lovely listeners who tunes in to listen subscribes and leaves a review on itunes if you have not done that yet that would mean a world to me so head over itunes or youtube or any app uh, that would take a minute uh, it will help our podcast uh, grow and i really appreciate your support once again thank you so much for tuning in bye for now take good care of yourself be safe and do something engaging, enlightening, and empowering. Thank you.